Welcome to the 2023 NCLEX Safety and Infection Control Practice Test. This test will have 40 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to resuscitate the like button by turning it white. Question 1. A nurse working in the ICU has a patient that is experiencing a sudden upper gastrointestinal bleed. What is the most important intervention? A. Place the patient in a Trendelenburg position. B. Place the patient in a supine position. C. Put the patient on their left side. D. Put the patient in a Sims position. The correct answer is A. Place the patient in a Trendelenburg position. Using the Trendelenburg position for patients with a high risk of hypotension, like with a large GI bleed, can be helpful in reducing the risk of hypotension. In order to increase surgical exposure of the pelvic organs, the surgeon Friedrich Trendelenburg invented the head down posture often known as the Trendelenburg position. The Trendelenburg position then became a frequently used technique in treating patients with shock and hypotension. The Trendelenburg posture has an increased cardiac output as its main consequence. While this is not a long-term therapy, initially placing the patient in a Trendelenburg position can help prevent hypotension. Question 2. A patient states to the UAP, I can't breathe. Which of the following interventions, if provided by the UAP, would warrant correction by the nurse? A. The UAP places the patient on oxygen. B. The UAP put the patient in a high Fowler's position. C. The UAP takes a pulse oximetry reading. D. The UAP counts the respiration rate of the patient. The correct answer is A. The UAP places the patient on oxygen. A UAP should immediately alert the nurse of the patient's condition. The UAP can place the patient in a high Fowler's position and take vital signs. Oxygen is considered a medication and should not be administered by the UAP. Question 3. The nurse is caring for a diabetic patient who the nurse finds sweating and only able to mumble words. What is the first intervention for the nurse to take? A. Give the patient 8 Oz of orange juice. B. Check a POC glucose reading. C. Ask the patient when the last time they ate. D. Give the patient 4 gram crackers. The correct answer is B. Check a POC glucose reading. The first intervention should be to assess the glucose. If the nurse learns that it is in fact hypoglycemia, the patient should be treated promptly. If a patient is only able to mumble, they are likely not able to answer any questions from the nurse. Question 4. The nurse working on an L and D unit suspects her patient is having a seizure. What is the most important intervention for the nurse to provide? A. Place the patient on her left side. B. Call a code blue. C. Give the patient magnesium. D. Check a POC glucose on the patient. The correct answer is A. Place the patient on her left side. A patient having a seizure should always be placed on their left side to prevent aspiration. A rapid response rather than a code blue should be called. The nurse should not administer any medication without the order from a physician. Checking a POC glucose is okay in this situation, especially if the patient is diabetic, but it is not the priority intervention. Question 5. There is a fire on a medical surgical unit on the second floor of the hospital. After the nurse has rescued her patients, what is the next step for the nurse to take? A. Aim the fire extinguisher. B. Set off the fire alarm. C. Assess her patients. D. Alarm the patients. The correct answer is B. Set off the fire alarm. The acronym RACE should be used to remember what the nurse should do in a fire. Rescue, alarm, contain, extinguish. The nurse should raise the fire alarm once rescuing patients. Question 6. A nurse in an assisted living cares for many different types of older adults with various health conditions. The nurse knows that patients with sensory changes as they age are at a high risk of which of the following? A. Isolation. B. Depression. C. Anxiety. D. Decreased physical endurance. The correct answer is A. Isolation. As adults age and become older adults, their senses change tremendously. They may lose their hearing, their taste may change, their vision may decline, and their sense of pain is altered. These changes can be mentally detrimental to patients, causing them to just want to be alone and isolated from their peers. This puts these patients at a high risk for isolation. Question 7. 
The UAP walks into a patient's room who is on oxygen and smoking in his bathroom. What should the UAP do immediately? A. Notify the charge nurse. B. Ask the patient to put out the cigarette. C. Pull the fire alarm. D. Turn off the oxygen. The correct answer is B. Ask the patient to put out the cigarette. The immediate intervention should be to have the patient put out the cigarette as the hospital contains lots of oxygen and it is highly flammable. The charge nurse should be notified, but it is not the most pertinent intervention. Question 8. A housekeeper is taking out the trash when he is stuck by a needle. What is the appropriate next step for the housekeeper? A. Wash his hands with soap and water for 15 minutes. B. Go to employee health immediately. C. Report the incident to the charge nurse on the unit. D. Obtain the needle and place in a sharps container. The correct answer is A. Wash his hands with soap and water for 15 minutes. If stuck by a needle, a staff member should encourage the wound to bleed and wash with soap and water for at least 15 minutes. The housekeeper should attempt to obtain the needle as there is a high risk of being stuck again. The employee should go to employee health. Question 9. What is the acronym that is important to remember when using a fire extinguisher in a fire? A. Race. B. Car. C. Race car. D. Care. The correct answer is A. Race. The acronym RACE should be used to remember what the nurse should do in a fire. Rescue. Alarm. Contain. Extinguish. The nurse should raise the fire alarm once rescuing patients. Question 10. What regulatory body is responsible for enforcing compliance with safety rules and procedures in hospitals? A. HIPAA. B. OSHA. C. CMS. D. CDC. The correct answer is B. OSHA. Hospitals can use a variety of materials developed by OSHA to assess their needs for worker safety, put in place safety and health management systems, and improve their safe patient handling initiatives. Not only does preventing workplace accidents benefit employees, but it also benefits patients and helps hospitals save money. Question 11. The nurse is caring for a patient who is placed in restraints. The nurse notices that the restraints are tied to the bed rails. What action should the nurse take first? A. Leave the restraints. This is the proper place to tie them. B. Remove the restraints and tie them to the bed frame. C. Report the incident to the charge nurse. D. Ensure that the nurse can put two fingers between the patient's wrist and the restraint. The correct answer is B. Remove the restraints and tie them to the bed frame. Restraints should never be tied to bed rails. They should always be tied to the bed frame for patient and staff safety. The nurse should ensure that they can place two fingers between the patient's wrist and the restraint and report the incident to the charge nurse. However, these are not the priority interventions. Question 12. The UAP is preparing to help a two-day post-surgical patient take a shower. What should the UAP do if the patient becomes weak or feels faint when stepping into the warm shower? A. Have the patient sit on the shower chair. B. Place their knee against the patient to help lower the patient to the floor. C. Ask the patient to step out of the shower until they are more stable. D. Turn on the cold water. The correct answer is A. Have the patient sit on the shower chair. The patient who is post-op and attempting a shower for the first time should always have a shower chair in the shower. The UAP should have the patient sit on the shower chair if they begin to experience hypotension. Hypotension is likely with warm-slash-hot water due to vasodilation. Question 13. The nurse educator is educating new nurses in orientation about the prevention of germs in the hospital setting. What is the best way to prevent the spread of germs in the healthcare field? A using alcohol-based wipes, B, hand washing, C, using alcohol-based hand gel, D, wiping surfaces with cleaning wipes and allowing surfaces to dry thoroughly. The correct answer is B, hand washing. Hand hygiene is the best way to prevent healthcare-acquired infections. While the other options help prevent the spread of germs, the most important way to prevent the spread of infection is hand washing. Question 14. In which of the following scenarios would the nurse use soap and water instead of an alcohol-based rub? A. The nurse is changing a wound dressing and has gloves on. B. The nurse is providing Foley care and has gloves on. C. The nurse is suctioning the patient and phlegm gets on the nurse's wrist. D. The nurse is changing an ostomy bag and has gloves on. The correct answer is 
C. The nurse is suctioning the patient and phlegm gets on the nurse's wrist. Hand hygiene should be performed with a staff member's hands, or wrists in this case, are visibly soiled. The nurse should perform hand hygiene with soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds. Question 15. The nurse educator is educating nurses about bloodborne pathogens in a yearly in-service. Which of the following is not considered a bloodborne pathogen? A. Hepatitis A. B. HIV. C. Hepatitis B. D. Syphilis. The correct answer is A. Hepatitis A. Hepatitis A is not considered a bloodborne pathogen. Hepatitis A can be spread with contact only. The other options are considered bloodborne pathogens. Question 16. How often must the healthcare worker have a TB skin test and or chest x-ray performed to comply with infection control policies? A. Yearly. B. Bi-yearly. C. Every six months. D. Each quarter. The correct answer is A. Yearly. TB skin tests are to be performed yearly. If a TB skin test is positive, the employee will require a chest x-ray. Question 17. What is the term used for healthcare equipment that OSHA requires healthcare facilities to have to minimize exposures to hazardous materials? A. Personal protective equipment. B. Personal prevention equipment. C. Prevention protective equipment. D. Protective prevention equipment. The correct answer is A. Personal protective equipment. PPE, or personal protective equipment, is clothing and gear used to reduce exposure to dangers that might result in life-threatening diseases and injuries at work. Many diseases and injuries might be brought on by exposure to workplace risks, such as chemical, radioactive, physical, electrical, or mechanical ones. Items such as gloves, safety goggles, shoes, coveralls, vests, respirators, earplugs, or muffs, hard helmets, and respirators are examples of personal protection equipment. Question 18. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. There is a period of time in which the bacteria invades the host and when symptoms appear. What is this period of time called? A. Incubation. B. Prodromal. C. Illness. D. Convalescence. The correct answer is A. Incubation. The period between being exposed to an infectious agent and the start of symptoms is known as the incubation stage. During the incubation phase, viral or bacterial particles multiply. The incubation, prodromal, sickness, decline, and convalescence periods are among the five stages of a disease, also known as phases. As the virus is incubating, the patient may or may not exhibit signs of the illness. Question 19. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. What is the term for a pathogen's mode of invading a vulnerable host? A. Portal of entry. B. Mode of transportation. C. Transmission. D. Direct contact. The correct answer is A. Portal of entry. The way a virus enters a vulnerable host is referred to as the portal of entry. The pathogens or toxins active tissues must be accessible through the portal of entrance. Infectious pathogens frequently use the same gateway they did to leave the original host when they join a new host. Question 20. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. In which type of container should blood-soaked linens be disposed of? A. A black trash bag marked biohazard. B. A yellow trash bag marked biohazard. C. A red trash bag marked biohazard. D. A red and black bin marked biohazard. The correct answer is C. A red trash bag marked biohazard. The nurse slash employee should think red equals blood. Any blood-soaked linens or other objects should be placed in a red bag marked biohazard. Question 21. The nurse educator is educating nurses about airborne pathogens in a yearly in-service. Which of the following is not considered an airborne pathogen? A. Anthrax. B. Varicella. C. Meningitis. D. MRSA. The correct answer is D. MRSA. MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is spread via contact. This can be spread with urine contact, wound contact, and even sharing personal items. Question 22. The nurse is suctioning a patient when the phlegm gets into the nurse's eyes. What is the first step that the nurse should take? A. Find the nearest eye wash station. B. Report this to the charge nurse. C. Wipe the eyes with a paper towel. D. Go to employee health immediately. The correct answer is 
A. Find the nearest eyewash station. The nurse should find the nearest eyewash station and wash with water. An alternative would be to flush the eye with saline. The nurse would use soap and water for a needle stick and water only for mucous membrane exposures, like to the mouth or nose. Question 23. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. Which of the following is important to don when caring for a patient with MRSA? A. Gown, gloves, goggles, shoe covers, hairnet. B. Gown, gloves, goggles. C. Gloves and goggles. D. Gloves and gown. The correct answer is D. Gloves and gown. While caring for patients with MRSA, healthcare personnel will don gloves and a gown over their personal attire. Further, visitors can be requested to put on a gown and gloves. Healthcare professionals and guests take off their gowns and gloves as well as wash their hands before leaving the room. If the nurse suspects that they may be exposed to MRSA to the eyes, they may don goggles as well. This may be the case in patients with MRSA in draining wounds. Question 24. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. Why are false nails not acceptable in the healthcare environment? A. Gram-negative pathogens under the nails. B. Alcohol-based gel cannot kill the type of pathogens that get between the natural nail and artificial nail. C. Soap and water cannot kill the type of pathogens that get between the natural nail and artificial nail. D. They are unprofessional and if too long can cause damage to one's skin. The correct answer is A. Gram-negative pathogens under the nails. Nurses working in direct care are recommended not to wear acrylic nails due to the possibility for transmitting germs and bacteria from person to person. This is because acrylic nails may help in the gathering of germs and bacteria. This is especially true with gram-negative bacteria, whose tougher cell walls make them more difficult to eradicate. Question 25. A community health nurse is providing education about vaccinations in an in-service. What type of immunity does one receive from vaccinations? A. Passive immunity. B. Secondary immunity. C. Active immunity. D. Primary immunity. The correct answer is C. Active immunity. Vaccines offer disease-specific active immunity. You cannot become ill from vaccines, but they might make your body believe it has a disease so it can fight it. Active immunity is created by the body's own generation of antibodies, whereas passive immunity is created by the introduction of antibodies from the outside world into the body. This is a key distinction between the two types of immunity. Question 26. A UAP is caring for a patient with Clostridium difficile, C. diff. What should be provided to the patient with C. diff who does not have a private toilet in their room? A. Bedside commode. B. Bedpan. C. PPE to walk to a nearby bathroom. D. Mask and gloves. The correct answer is A. Bedside commode. Because C. diff is so contagious, the patient with C. diff should not share a toilet with others. The patient with C. diff should be brought a bedside commode for only the patient to use in their room. Question 27. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. Which of the following pathogens are not killed by alcohol-based hand gel? A. Bacterial spores. B. Gram-positive cochi. C. Coccus bacterium. D. Gram-negative rods. The correct answer is A. Bacterial spores. The efficacy of alcohol-based hand rubs against viruses, protozoan oocysts, and bacterial spores like Clostridium difficile, C. diff, is limited. For cleaning hands, you can also use alcohol-free superoxidized solutions and hydrogen peroxide-based hand sanitizers. It is important for healthcare workers exposed to these types of bacteria to wash with soap and water instead of alcohol-based gel. Question 28. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. Which of the following is not considered a portal of exit in a host that is human? A. Saliva. B. Sneezing. C. Sexual contact. D. Inhalation. The correct answer is D. Inhalation. The way a virus enters a vulnerable host is referred to as the portal of entry. The pathogens or toxins active tissues must be accessible through the portal of entrance. Inhalation is considered a portal of entry as opposed to a portal of exit. Question 29. A charge nurse is providing an in-service about hospital-acquired infections, HAIs. 
Which of the following procedures would require the healthcare professional to wear sterile gloves? A. Foley catheter insertion. B. PIV insertion. C. Wound care on a diabetic patient. D. Wound vac change. The correct answer is A. Foley catheter insertion. There are many procedures in nursing that require sterile gloves. The nurse should use sterile gloves while inserting a Foley catheter to prevent the risk of UTI. Sterile gloves are almost always in the Foley catheter insertion kit. Question 30. What is the proper order to follow when donning PPE? A. Gown, mask, goggles, gloves. B. Mask, goggles, gown, gloves. C. Gloves, gown, goggles, mask. D. Gloves, goggles, gown, mask. The correct answer is A. Gown, mask, goggles, gloves. There is evidence-based practice to support the process of how a healthcare worker is to don PPE. The correct order is gown, mask, goggles, gloves. This order is supposed to cut down on the amount of times the healthcare worker touches their face. Hand hygiene should always be performed before donning PPE. Question 31. A charge nurse is providing an in-service about hospital-acquired infections, HAIs, and how to prevent them. What will the nurse use to clean your hands when they are visibly soiled? A. Alcohol-based gel rubbing until completely dry. B. Soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds. C. Alcohol-based gel. Rubbing for a minimum of 20 seconds. D. Soap and water for a minimum of 60 seconds. The correct answer is B. Soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds. In most clinical settings, alcohol-based hand rubs are preferred over soap and water because they are more effective at killing potentially lethal germs on hands than soap, are typically more accessible, take less time, and significantly lower bacterial counts on hands unless hands are visibly soiled, such as with dirt, blood, or body fluids. Question 32. A community health nurse is providing education about the responsibility of the CDC in an in-service. What is the main responsibility of the CDC, Center for Disease Control? A. To eradicate health disparities in each state. B. To ensure each state complies with immunization. C. To prevent and identify infections. D. To provide immunizations to every American. The correct answer is C. To prevent and identify infections. In order to stop diseases from entering the United States, the CDC's role is to prevent, identify, and respond to infections wherever they are. DC carries out important scientific research, disseminates health information, and responds when dangers to our country's health materialize. To respond and work for the complete eradication of all diseases, CDC offers leadership on a national and international scale, in addition to laboratory and epidemiology knowledge. Question 33. A safety nurse is providing education about infection control in an in-service for other nurses. The nurse explains that there is a period of time in which the bacteria invades the host and when symptoms appear. What is this period of time called? A. Incubation. B. Prodromal. C. Stationary phase. D. Exponential phase. The correct answer is A. Incubation. The incubation, prodromal, sickness, decline, and convalescence phases are among the five stages of a disease. After the pathogen first enters the host, commonly known as the patient, the incubation period begins in an acute disease. Question 34. A nurse is observing a new UAP on the unit perform a bedside POC glucose test. Which action by the UAP would warrant correction by the nurse? The UAP A. Places the lancet in the trash can. B places the lancet in the sharps container. C. Places the monitor strip in the sharps container. D. Wipes away the first drop of blood before obtaining sample. The correct answer is A. Places the lancet in the trash can. Because the lancet was used to stick the patient and break the skin, it should be placed in the sharps container along with the glucose monitor strip used to collect the blood. The lancet and glucose strip should never be placed in the trash can. Question 35. A community health nurse is providing education about how communicable diseases are spread. The nurse knows that varicella, chickenpox, can be spread via A. Respiratory secretions. B. Sexual contact. C. Vaccinations. D. Fecal root. The correct answer is A. Respiratory secretions. Direct touch and inhalation of aerosols from vesicles or respiratory secretions are the two main ways that varicella, chickenpox, is transmitted. 
until all lesions are crusted over, standard measures as well as airborne and contact precautions should be taken. Under airborne contact precautions, patients with varicella that is either confirmed or suspected, or herpes zoster that has spread widely, are treated. Regardless of immunological status, a fit-tested, seal-checked N95 respirator is necessary in addition to the gloves and gown. Respirators are not necessary for immune visitors. Question 36. A nurse educator in a nursing home is providing staff with an in-service about resident safety. What should the nurse-slash-CNA do when a resident has eloped and returned? A. Assess the resident for injuries. B. Tell the resident that it is never okay for them to leave without permission. C. Have the family members come sit with the resident. D. Send the resident to the hospital to assess for any injuries. The correct answer is A. Assess the resident for injuries. When returned, the resident should be immediately assessed for injury. Telling a resident that they should not leave without permission is not recommended because some elderly adults have dementia or other cognitive problems that will cause them not to understand. This can make the resident feel trapped. It is not necessary to send the resident to the hospital unless there are injuries that warrant a hospital trip. It is necessary to have the resident's family sit with them. Question 37. A nurse educator is teaching nursing students about patient safety. Which of the following patients is most at risk for a fall? A. A 65-year-old with a BP of 12080 with a Foley catheter. B. A 37-year-old post-op hysterectomy 12 hours ago on a PCA pump. C. A 19-year-old patient with GAD prescribed 0.5 mg clonazepam. D. A 75-year-old patient post-op knee replacement 5 days ago walking with a PT. The correct answer is B. A 37-year-old post-op hysterectomy 12 hours ago on a PCA pump. The patient most at risk for a fall is the post-op hysterectomy patient on a PCA pump. The PCA pump is a patient-controlled analgesia pump that provides opioid medications to patients. The pumps are locked and allow patients to push a button to self-administer medications every so often, that is every 10 minutes. This patient is at a high risk due to the side effects of opioid medication. Question 38. The nurse is speaking to a patient about her dog when the patient suddenly begins to slur her speech. What should be the nurse's initial intervention? A. Call a code blue. B. Assess the patient's vital signs. C. Ask the patient what day it is. D. Send the patient for a CT scan. The correct answer is B. Assess the patient's vital signs. The nurse should initially assess the patient's vital signs because it can help the nurse determine if the patient is having a hemorrhagic stroke or an ischemic stroke. The nurse would call a rapid response instead of a code blue unless the patient was pulseless or had no respiratory rate. Asking the patient which day it is is okay, however, this is not the initial response. The physician should assess the patient and give orders to send for a CT scan. Question 39. The nurse is observing a new UAP on the unit. Which of the following, if placed on the bedside table, would warrant correction by the nurse? A. Dentures. B. Hot coffee in a mug. C. Warm food from the cafeteria. D. A basin for bathing. The correct answer is B. Hot coffee in a mug. Because the bedside table is not stationary and sits over the patient's bed, hot coffee without a lid should never be placed on a bedside table. Dentures should be placed in a denture cup, but the patient may sit the denture cup on the bedside table. Question 40. The lead UAP is providing an in-service to the new UAPs on the unit. The lead UAP states that a draw sheet aids in preventing A. Bed sores. B. Skin shearing. C. Falls. D. Urine stained bottom sheet. The correct answer is B. Skin shearing. While moving patients, medical staff frequently utilize draw sheets, which are short bed sheets that are draped crosswise over the middle of a mattress's bottom sheet to cover the space between the person's upper back and thighs. It is around the size of a typical sheet and is available in cotton, plastic, or rubber. Skin shearing can be avoided by lifting the patient rather than moving them across the bed. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Click the first link in the description to take the free NCLEX practice test. Also, check out these videos that can help you with your future studies. Don't forget to resuscitate the like button and subscribe to our channel. And please share this video with your fellow nursing friends.